Let's get it. Everyone hates Tesla. There's nothing new to that. Let's get into this video and talk about how everyone hates Tesla. But today, we're going to be talking about how popular it is. Shout outs to Norway. I got to go there because those are some people that like the big homie Elon and love Tesla. So let's watch this. Shout outs to CNBC. They always got some good coverage. Of course, they come from Normiesville, right? But net net, let's see how Tesla became the most popular car brand in Norway. Let's get it. Norway is leading the world in EV adoption. Over 82% of the country's new car sales were electric vehicles last year. CNBC recently traveled to Norway to see what the U.S. could learn from the Scandinavian country when it comes to EVs. But while there, it quickly became apparent that there was another story to be told about an American automaker that has found success there. We have three different types of electric cars and Tesla, it's another level. It's much more comfortable. It's very easy to, to drive. I love the experience with the, the Tesla and I chose Tesla because uh, my parents chose the same car if, before me and I tried it out and I was skeptical because it was electric. But then after trying my parents, I was like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Show love. I mean, these people won't be a part of everyone hates Tesla because they love it. But this is facts. This is this is this is non-debatable, you know? It's the best car out here. It's the best manufacturing process point that you've ever seen. It's the best factory in the world. So you'd be like, oh, well, they have the best factory, but create the worst products. Really, my G? You really are going to say, come on, man. Toyota put some respect on Tesla's name. I hope you guys eventually do. Let's go back. Shout out to my homie. The car I was driving, I used it to charge three, four times per day. Now, sometimes I used to charge one time with just 10 minutes of my time. So I save a lot of time with Tesla. Tesla is uh, the most sold car in Norway for the last couple of years. So it's a, it's a great success. They have developed the car that uh, the customer wants. And they also did a lot for the infrastructure for charging. Tes Not only did they like produce the bad car, but they produced and provided and installed and built out the infrastructure. Great job, Tesla. The people who work at Tesla, pat yourself on the back. Shout out to Norway. I'm going to get an actual, you know, I'm going to start repping Norway. Tesla sold over 23,000 Model Ys in Norway last year significantly more than its top competitors, Volkswagen and Skoda. And the automaker accounted for about 20% of all vehicles sold in the country last year. 20% 20 20 the competition's coming, but they're not running with the top dog. It's okay to come to the actual syndication. It's okay to come to the event in the race, but you got to win. You got to be out there having the best product and service. That's all we got. 2023 also marked the third year in a row that Tesla was a top car brand in Norway. Although Tesla's sales in Norway represent only a sliver of the 1.8 million vehicles the company delivered last year, Norway's importance to Tesla goes beyond cold hard cash. Norway has acted not only as a proving ground for Tesla, but also as a poster child for the EV transition as a whole. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has taken a number of trips to the small Nordic country and has often praised Norway's support of electric vehicles. Here's Musk speaking at an energy conference in Norway in 2022. I love Norway, so, and um, and, and I, I just want to to thank um, the, the leaders and the, the, the people of Norway for their long-standing support of electric vehicles uh, and sustainable energy. Um, and I just want uh, you know the, the people of Norway to know that hey, you, you really made a difference. To understand Norway's importance to Tesla and vice versa, we spoke to EV owners, government officials, and business leaders about the country's transition to electric vehicles and Tesla's role in it. But I got to deal with Americans talking about conspiracy theories and why they don't want to and why they don't want to buy the actual car. You know, here you is. You got a different company more excited about an American product than Americans. It's, it's it's asinine. So thank you, Norway, for supporting not just only America, but just a good product, right? But we got Americans that can't even recognize it, right? Like they would rather invest in Ford and Toyota and all these other companies that were closing down factories across America instead of investing in a company that opened up 
and built new factories across America, not only car manufacturing factories, uh, excuse me, but also battery factories, car factories. What else we got? Oh, lithium ion refinery plants. Like, we're creating massive amounts of products and factories in America. Battery and car and processing lithium ion, a mineral inside of America. We're building out all types of things in America, creating all types of jobs, but they still can't put no respect on a name. Expanding in Nevada, expanding in Fremont, expanding in Texas, acres of land, building out housing. Man. Tesla got an early foothold in Norway's EV market. Norwegians were the first European customers to receive deliveries of the Model S in 2013, and it quickly became the country's best-selling car. Today, that title has been transferred over to Tesla's Model Y. When we started building charging stations in 2012, there were less than 10,000 electric cars in Norway, and quite a few of them uh, were Teslas because my first electric car was a Nissan Leaf that I bought in 2015. Uh, that one had about a 100 kilometer range. And at the same time, you could get Teslas with 400 kilometer range. So a lot of people chose the Teslas for a long time because of the range, but also you know, because they're nice cars. Since 2013, sales of Tesla cars in Norway have steadily increased. At the same time, Tesla greatly expanded its charging infrastructure. Back in 2013, Tesla chose Norway to kick off the installation of the company's first supercharging stations in Europe. Tesla developed this supercharging technology, which is the most advanced charging technology in the world. Tesla's network of superchargers in Norway has since grown from just six locations in 2013 to over 100 supercharging stations today. Peter Hognaland is the Assistant Secretary General of the Norwegian EV Association and says Tesla has been key to Norway's electric vehicle transition. And guys, it's just a new good in industry, rebuilding infrastructure differently. I mean, however you feel about gas and combustible engines, I have nothing to say about that. What I am saying is it's a new industry. It's more innovation. No different than in the other video, if you watched, we talked about people building out suburban communities. Like it's a new industry entirely, you know, malls, malls weren't a thing prior to suburban communities being built out. And so it's innovation, it's e-commerce, it's, it's new innovation regarding transportation. And that should be welcomed and encouraged regardless of how you feel about the climate. This is just about a new industry, effective and efficient product, in my opinion. This is just about a great product, a great service. And shout outs to the actual supercharging grid. And everybody in Norway likes it, right? So we get big complainers or we get a little bit of people complaining in America. And then the media just putting that on a megaphone versus a lot of people complaining about Tesla. It's not a lot. It's actually a little. And surveys prove that it's a little bit of people complaining about panel gaps or some small quality issues or service issues, but the majority love. The charge. And even Toyota loves it. Shout out to Toyota. Network, it's easy access. Uh, it's reliable. You know that you can drive anywhere with, with the Tesla in Norway and Europe. But of course, it was just recently that they opened up their network for other cars. So now it has been really also beneficial for uh, non-Tesla owners to use uh, superchargers. During our week-long stay in Oslo, we visited a number of charging stations. Although we had no luck getting our rented BMW iX3 to charge at any of the Tesla charging points we tried, we did speak to Tesla owners, most of whom had a favorable view of the company. I drove from Bergen, which is almost 10 hours, and it was incredible with the Tesla. It was very nice. I'm very happy with the car. And when you go Tesla, you'll never go back. One of the charging stations we visited was right outside Oslo Airport, about 40 minutes from the city's downtown area. The location featured a number of recently installed V4 superchargers. Tesla first introduced its V4 charging technology to the Netherlands in March 2023 and has expanded installation to several countries in Europe and more recently the U.S. And what do you think of these new V4 chargers? Yeah, that's amazing. Like the, the Yeah, look at his smile, man. See, so this is where a lot of people have issues with the supercharger network. 
But of course, once we hit the ground and start really talking to people, then we start getting some good information. And of course, Tesla's just known to deliver on their products across the board when they actually launch and especially when they mass produce. And so the infrastructure has been great for many people and many people actually experiencing the product are not investors of Tesla. So there goes the fanboy myth. It is that they really like the product. See, we wouldn't be mad if they liked the product if it came from Apple or something like that, right? Like, we wouldn't be like, oh, man, you know, he's crazy. But when it's, you know, Tesla, everybody loves to hate. Yeah, that, that's uh, incredible. It goes so fast. You're staying for 10 minutes, and suddenly you have, like, uh, the possibility to drive for two hours. That's, that's phenomenal. It's faster than uh, getting fuel on your, on your car. So I know that I'm really happy with the, the Tesla. Two Tesla owners we spoke to said they liked the fact that they could take advantage of their vehicle's free lifetime charging, a perk that Tesla has periodically offered as an added incentive for buyers. As long as this car lives, <laughs> it's free charging. One drawback we often hear with electric vehicles is that the batteries do not perform in the extreme cold, becoming less efficient, sporting shorter range, and taking longer to charge. It's a reality that some EV drivers in the U.S. faced after a winter freeze engulfed much of the country in January. Electric vehicles may save drivers on the cost of filling up, but this winter, growing frustrations for drivers stuck waiting at charging stations. But the EV drivers that we interviewed in Norway, where the average temperature in the winter is around 19 degrees Fahrenheit, did not seem too concerned. A lot of people don't think electric vehicles are very great in the winter. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Well, they are better because you can preheat them, so you can come to a warm car, cozy car, even in the morning. Of course, the battery is, when it's cold, it, it's not as efficient, but with bigger batteries now, preheated batteries, better charging infrastructure, it's, it's uh, not a problem. How is it in the winter, in the snow? Uh, in the snow, yes, you have to charge more, because it's uh, used to maybe the, sometimes the, the double uh, compared to the summer. Still, I had no problem. How is it in the winter? No, it's really good because it's, it's so heavy. So you're able to get your cabin either way. But since it's so heavy, it, it goes so well. So I re I'm really happy. See, they're trying to create a problem. No, I mean, you're supposed to be telling me it's bad. You're supposed to say it's bad. You're supposed to say because 50 miles were taken off the range, it's a complete disaster. Like, no, the average person is not driving that far to begin with. And average, the average person ain't driving that far when it's actually snowing outside like that and it's extremely cold. So it really is irrelevant that you bring it up. I mean, it's a part of the conversation. It's not irrelevant, but it, it doesn't hold that much weight as they map it out. Like, man, you see the, the battery underperforming what it used to be. Can you give me a number of mileages that it decreases in? Well, it decreases in some shape, form, fashion. OK, let's knock off 100 miles. Is the average person every time they drive about to do that? No. All right, then. Then what are we really talking about? There's some small, uh, what is it, con? Okay, I got you. I'm not saying that it's not no con and it doesn't exist. But when it comes out to the average consumer and how they deal with it, they're like, no, I love it, man. It's all right. And shoot, here's some other pros that you get from the car, which those people mentioned. Come on. But let's drum up something. Let's drum up something against our own American companies and try to make them look bad. But if it was the goddamn Toyota Leaf, you wouldn't say nothing about it. If it was the competition, which is right behind them, you wouldn't say nothing. Get up out of here. Norway's government has incentivized the sale of green vehicles since the 1990s, making it the perfect proving ground for Tesla and other EV manufacturers. The whole parliament agreed on that. The there is some kind of public responsibility to push forward the, the green mobility. And we set a goal for 2025 that all new passenger cars should be zero emission. And when you have set a goal like that, you have to put some incentives to make it work. Some of these incentives included a zero registration tax, free access to toll roads, free parking for EVs, and the ability to drive in the bus lanes. The biggest measure that we introduced was zero uh, value added tax. So in Norway, there's a 25% value added tax for every item you purchase. Reducing that to zero for uh, the EVs had a massive impact. 
Despite such incentives, Sirstad said electric vehicles in Norway didn't take off until about 10 years ago, when Tesla's Model S and other car models like the Nissan Leaf became more readily available. Being first had its advantages. The 200 not being first. There was other people who were first. Being a great product had its advantage. Being a great product with great infrastructure. The guy had a Nissan Leaf, and he got rid of that joint's ASAP Rocky. A billion knock, or about $20 billion that the Norwegian government has spent on EV subsidies, a lot of it has, has uh, made its way to Tesla because they were, they were the only uh, car that you could buy at that time. So um, I guess that's why Elon Musk typically comes here for the launches. And, and we were the second or third biggest Tesla market in the world for, for, for quite a bit of time. Back in April of 2014, Tesla broke Norway's record for most monthly sales of a single model, electric or gas, with its Model S. The first Tesla started coming out. Uh, I know quite a few Norwegians who were early uh, and, and lined up to, to, to get them. The Norwegian government's been quite forward-looking in a number of policies, and they're still spending about $4 billion a year. So that's $1,000 per inhabitant or $800 per inhabitant in terms of subsidizing electric car purchases, which is quite a lot. So that sort of long-term view, that's been certainly part of the success there. I'm curious why. Yeah, I mean, definitely. They took a hit on that, but that's $1,000 per person. So if all of them went out and copped a car, though, they be winning because it was like 25% on a dang car. That's ridiculous. So yes, subsidize that, but the government subsidizes many things. Section eight is a better way. So that's a big advantage also in Norway. Let's give it to the people who make bad choices in their life and ain't got no money. Let's give all the money to them instead. Right? So they could continue to be on section eight in government support and welfare. <laughs> Rather, rather give it to people who are buying products and services in a country and are like making it through in life and doing more effective and efficient things. Tesla has come a long way in Norway from selling just 13 cars in the country in 2009 to over 21,000 cars in 2022 and clutching 20% of the country's entire new car market in 2023. But whether Tesla will be able to maintain its dominance in Norway has yet to be seen as the EV market becomes ever more competitive. I drive a Tesla right now, but I've actually ordered a new car uh, that's coming in uh, a few weeks. So I'm getting a Skoda, which is a European made uh, electric car. Why did you decide to make the switch? It's a little more family friendly, the Skoda. I have some friends that drive it and they're very happy with it. I got the Tesla in 2019 and back then there were not that many options if you wanted a car with like a really, really long range. But now we have another baby coming up in a few weeks and we found out that the Skoda is a good family car. What kind of car do you drive? I drive uh, the Peugeot 205 electric version from uh, a quite small car, but nice. During our time in Norway, we also noticed a number of EVs from other automakers, including Toyota, Skoda and Volkswagen. Chinese automakers like BYD and NIO are also gaining ground in the country. Here's Musk talking about competition from Chinese automakers during Tesla's latest Q4 earnings call. The Chinese car companies are the most competitive car companies in the world. I think they will have significant success outside of China, depending on what kind of tariffs or trade barriers are established. Frankly, I think if there are not trade barriers established, they will pretty much demolish the most other car companies in the world. They're extremely good. Tesla's stock took a hit in January after the company reported profit and revenue for the fourth quarter that missed. Guys, look, this is the stuff I'm talking about. This is the stupid stuff they talk about. Like every stock is like this. <laughs> Look, look at this hit it took since January 2024. It's down 20%. Like, why are you moving from like, what? It, this is so awkward. One, two, three, four, five months. Like, why am I getting a five months timeline? Remember, year to date, right? So is it year to date? They're giving us a year to date. But let's say year to date, you also got year to year one year, two year, five year, 10 year max. Mm -hmm. And this is what they always do. Like, look at this year to date. Look at this five months. Let me show you the last five months. Let me show you how they're really slipping the five months. And let me show you the S&P 500. Like, come on, bro. Put the S&P 500 and Tesla together, right? Especially over 10 years. Like the S&P 500 has been going for a long time, IG. But net net at the end of the day, that's not how you do it analysts estimates 
At the same time, Chinese EV maker BYD overtook Tesla as the EV maker to sell the most battery-only vehicles in the final quarter of 2023. Though Tesla did win out overall, having sold a total of 1.8 million vehicles throughout the entire year, compared to nearly 1.6 million for BYD. Then what are you talking about? See what I'm saying? Like, they always do this. Last quarter, they beat Tesla, but for the year they didn't. Like, what? Like, why would you? You just wanted to say they beat him, right? Like, see, they beat him in the last quarter of 2023, but for the year, Tesla's won, yeah. Tesla is the EV maker to sell the most battery only. And they're up, like, what? Not even 40,000? Only vehicles in the final quarter of 2023. In the final quarter of 2023, they were up 40,000 over them. But in the overall year, they were up what? Though Tesla did win out overall, having sold a total of 1.8 million vehicles throughout the entire year, compared to nearly 1.6 million. But they were up 200. So even if you gave them an extra 40 on each quarter, they would still have got landslided and would have got beat for the whole year. See, guys, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> They just be wanting to like create imaginary, not saying they're not competition, but like, oh man, you see, they lost. They lost. They lost last quarter of last year. It's like, oh damn, they lost a year. No, no, just the last quarter. They were up forty thousand on them. Well, even if you extrapolate that to the past, they sold one point six, and Tesla sold one point eight. That's two hundred. With that, that would be like what? That wouldn't that'd be 120. They'll still be behind 80 grand. Well, you know, well, you know, they the competition's coming. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna be some con. Y'all never was on China's dealios like that ever before. China was known to have the most inferior quality products for the longest. Now they're gonna beat Tesla. Come on, man. These guys. Million for BYD. Aside from competition, Tesla also faces pressure from the Nordic countries as some of the company's workers in the region call for collective bargaining agreements. Right now, you've got just this one uh, group of mechanics in Sweden who are asking Tesla to recognize their right to organize as a union. And now you have other labor unions. In one group, my G, one group. In Sweden who are saying, you know what? Maybe we won't deliver Tesla models to Sweden that are scheduled for uh, transportation there. That's the development today that there are uh, Norway transport workers who are saying later this month, they may stop transporting Tesla models to Sweden. Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is one of Tesla's largest shareholders, has also said that it would continue to push the company to respect labor rights. The fund also backs BYD. But Musk has typically been resistant to unions. Here he is talking about the topic at the New York Times Dealbook Summit last year. I disagree with the idea of unions, but perhaps for a reason that is different than people may expect, which is I, I just don't like anything which creates kind of a lords and peasants sort of thing. And, and I think the unions naturally try to create negativity in a company and, and create a kind of sort of lords and peasants uh, situation. In the midst of high EV adoption, and that's facts. Unions are always creating this overlords versus us commanders. And for the most part, most Tesla employees are satisfied and they don't want to unionize because they have stock awards, stock options. They're treated relatively well. And what Elon also said in that interview is, is we don't need unions. As long as we're treating our employees good, we're not going to be pro-union. I would be pro-union. We're actually doing good by our employees. They don't need to unionize. We're already united. You know, we work together. They work for us. And as long as we're doing right by them, then they don't have no need to form a union, nor would I emphasize their need to do it. Now, if it comes to a point that majority of people in Tesla unionize, there will be a reason to it because we failed to provide a good environment for them. So they now they think they need a union. It's like, come on, bro. Like, some people get married without a prenup. Like, why would I need this guarantee or why would I need to unionize and organize against the said company or in conjunction with company? However you want to phrase it, if we're doing all right and we're doing great with our current relationship. So shout outs to Elon for doing a great job and the employees at Tesla and also his other companies are good where they're at right now. Nively has played a big part in the country's EV transition. And now Norwegians hope the rest of the world will follow in their footsteps. 
we actually want more competition, especially from you guys and all over the world, actually. Because what happens in Norway is not that important. It's okay to lead the way in a sense, but we need the competition. Shout outs to everybody and shout outs to Norway for having it. Of course, another installment of Everyone Hates Tesla. Of course, not Norway. Norway loves Tesla. And thanks for the adoption. And thanks to also the team at Tesla for making great products that make people want to buy those products. And shout outs to the greatest country on the earth, United States. And if I had one for Norway, then I would use it. But I guess I don't. So today, a fantastic day for capitalism.